the College News, brought to you by the Murray State News. Hello, and welcome to the last edition of the College News for the semester. I'm DeCorian Walker. And I'm Deontay Berry. We begin with a change to the Board of Regents. On April 15th, the State Senate declined to confirm Sam Aguiar to the Board of Regents. That's right. The Louisville attorney confirmed the news on his personal Facebook page. Aguiar, who is a Murray State alumnus, was appointed by Governor Andy Beshear in 2021 and replaced board chair Jerry Rhodes. In an interview with the Murray Ledger and Times, Aguiar said in part, I was surprised and disappointed, but at the same time, if that's what the Senate thinks is best for the university, to go in a different direction, that's okay. I'll live with it. In a statement to the Murray State News, President Bob Jackson said, we appreciate Mr. Aguiar's service to the Murray State University Board of Regents and await Governor Bashir's next appointments in the near future. The College Democrats, sponsored by the United Campus Workers Kentucky chapter at Murray State, hosted a workers' right rally on Monday, May 2nd. College News reporter Jillian Smith has more. The workers' rights rally highlighted the lack of salary increases for faculty, staff, and student employees in regards to the cost of living adjustments, or COLA. Katie Stribling, president of the College Democrats, said workers' rights is a nonpartisan issue. Yesterday, May 1st, was International Workers' Day, which is also known as May Day. Um, and the College Democrats wanted to host this event in theme of May Day to bring awareness and open the discussion about student and working conditions here at Murray State. Dr. David Pizzo, professor in the history department, said the percentage of union membership has dropped from approximately a third of American workers in the 1980s to a dramatic 10 percent. Pizzo said the pandemic gave people the opportunity to evaluate their current workplace conditions. But it made very clear whether you're working at Amazon or working at Murray State, that there are all kinds of structures and systems that are completely unjust and really exploitative that got more exploitative during the pandemic. Former residential advisor Dorian Barnett read a speech written by a current RA afraid to come forward about their experience in fear of retaliation against their employer. This student said being in this position was mentally challenging. You have to deal with we have to deal with suicides, drugs, and mental health crises every day, but are not shown any basic human respect for a, a majority of residents. Shriveling hopes that after she graduates, this movement will continue to flourish and encourages future discussions on workers' rights. I'm Jillian Smith with the College News. Those interested in learning more about the Murray State Chapter of the United Campus Workers of Kentucky can message them on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at UCWKY Murray. It's been nearly 25 years since Murray State alumna Missy Jenkins Smith was shot and paralyzed in the Dudley Heath High School shooting. Student Michael Cardinal, who was 14 at the time, opened fire on a group of students, which included Jenkins Smith. Three students were killed that day and five others injured. Now, Cardinal is up for parole. College News reporter Grace Boatwright has more on what Jenkins Smith has to say about Cardinal's potential release. Missy Jenkins Smith was one of five people injured in the 1997 Heath High School shooting in McCracken County, Kentucky that killed three others. Her injuries led to Jenkins Smith becoming paralyzed from the chest down at the age of 15. While Jenkins Smith has been vocal about how the events affected her, writing a memoir titled I Choose to Be Happy about her experience in the shooting, she has begun to speak out again after the Kentucky Department of Corrections announced that Michael Carneal, the Heath High School shooter, would be eligible for parole in the fall of 2022. Following this announcement, Jenkins Smith has asked for anyone who has been affected to write letters to the parole board requesting that Carneal's release be denied. I want um, the parole board to understand how after 25 years, it has affected many people in many different ways. Jenkins Smith believes that far more than just those physically hurt that day count as victims. She believes that many people in the Western Kentucky area were personally affected by Carneal's decision that day and therefore encourages everyone to write to the parole board about their experiences. So I think a lot of people don't realize that just because maybe they were at home and they saw it on television or they were, uh, my husband um, 
uh, was in high school at the time and he was living here in Murray um, and he went to Callaway High School and he saw it on the news and they watched it on TV and it affected him. Um, innocence was lost, you know, thinking that nothing could happen to you in school. So I think it was effect affected people in different ways. So Jenkins Smith says that she does not believe that Carniel would be capable of taking care of himself upon release due to him having spent his entire adult life in prison. I, I, I just can't in my head imagine that that could happen because he's been in prison for 25 years since he was 14 years old. He's not been responsible to take care of himself. Um, he, like I said, had a, a mental illness that he said caused him to do what he did. Um, he was diagnosed with a, some sort of schizophrenia, some um, type of schizophrenia, and had to take medication for him to be normal. If you wish to send a letter to the parole board, it should be addressed to Kentucky Parole Board, P.O. Box 2400, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40602, and must be received by July 31st. The university is having to reduce its Google storage usage by the end of the month. I spoke with the IT department and professors on campus to see how this change will impact the university. As we hit the semester's end, faculty has been presented with a new dilemma with the recent changes in Google's storage usage policy. Google is planning to place a university-wide cap on the storage limit that the university has access to. According to Casey Workman, this is what that would mean. The short term is Google is planning to place a university-wide cap on the amount of storage that we can use. The average faculty member isn't really going to be impacted by this, said Workman. Although this change won't affect the average faculty member, I spoke to Dr. Stephanie Anderson of the JMC department to get her thoughts on Google's recent changes in storage usage for the university. I don't know how the university is going to handle it. I'm sure the IT department will look at the best way for the university to, to handle the storage situation. I reached out to Laura Castleberry of the IT department and she broke down exactly what this will mean. Currently, we're using 232 terabytes of storage space, but we will soon be limited to 100 terabytes. The short-term easy fix is for Murray State individuals who are consuming a high volume is to just audit their usage and trim the excess. For students and faculty alike, we all have until May 31st to find an alternative storage method or put our information on a storage device. Until then, I'm DeCorian Walker with the College News. College students have many different definitions of dead week. College news reporter Rachel Esner took to the streets again to find out how Murray State students define dead week. Dead week. Um, for me, dead week typically, well, this year anyway, is just all assignments packed into one week and you're dead. You're, <laughs> you're dying. Um, so what do you think dead week should be? I feel like dead week should be a week of studying for your finals. Um, it's like tiring. It's not like the dead week definition of people that like say there's nothing going on. I'm crazy busy during dead week, so that's mine. Do you have like a bunch of homework and finals or anything? Uh, lots of projects and homework and tests before my finals, yeah. It's the week before finals week. Um, what do you think dead week should be? Um, the week before finals week. Um, dead week would be a week to take everything off of your plate and focus solely on studying and making sure that you do good on your finals. Excuse me, sir. Um, what do you think about Murray State's dead week? Um, a lot of studying. Uh, definition of dead week is pretty much like no class, very minimal, even if so, no homework, where I don't have to do anything. I feel like where you just like have the chance to study. Yeah, like no new assignments or tests you can study. Um, so what do you think about Murray State's dead week? Personally, mine's pretty dead. She's alive. I mean, I had a test today, so. <laughs> the week before finals week because you're dead inside with all the amount of work you have to yeah. do. <laughs> um, excuse me, sir. Hey, what, what's your definition of dead week? Um, are you mad that Murray State is having a dead week? <laughs> Since dead week is upon us, that means it's almost time for finals. Finals begin on Monday, May 9th, and are scheduled according to your class times. To see the official MSU final schedule, visit murraystate.edu.
Turning to sports now, Coach Steve Prohm has received three commitments for the men's basketball team in the last week. Rachel Esner is at the sports desk this week for Connor Capito. Rachel, can you tell us more about these commitments? I sure can, D. On Monday morning, Jamari Smith, a 6'8 forward from Queens University, committed to Murray State. He made the commitment official on his Twitter saying, 110% committed. This was followed up by Jacoby Wood transferring from Belmont to Murray State on Wednesday. The 6'2 guard made the announcement official on Twitter saying no one can stop God's plan. It's already written. Wednesday evening saw another commit in the form of Rob Perry from Stetson University. The 6'4 guard made it official on his Twitter. On to baseball. In their weekend series against SIUE, they won two of three games. On Tuesday, the team defeated Southern Illinois. The team will be away this weekend as they travel to Clarksville, Tennessee to take on the Governors of Austin P. Now to softball. They lost both games of a doubleheader to Austin P on Wednesday. They were able to bounce back by sweeping Tennessee Tech over the weekend. The softball team will take on Moorhead State at home starting tomorrow. This series will conclude their regular season. That's all for sports. Back to you, D. Thanks, Rachel. The Murray State TV Club and Theater Department will show a new short film at the Curtis Center this Saturday. Dustin Wilcox has more. Dustin? Zach Lamb and Zach Claggett have more than just their first names in common. In fact, the two recently produced a short film together. Grief tells the tale of two ill-fated lovers as they grapple with tragic circumstances beyond their control. Claggett coined the concept in October 2021. He then met Lamb, who helped him iron out kinks in the script. The inspiration for it was, well, I just had the first semester in college and, you know, you know, being a down person in college and stuff, it kind of like just built up with it. And I dealt with like a loss in the family. After securing a cast and crew composed of TV and theater students, they spent the entirety of April bringing their script to life. Now that the film is complete, Lamb and Claggett plan to showcase it in the Curra Center Theater. They encourage everyone to come out for this free event on Saturday at 1 p.m. When people come to see grief, you know, I want them to watch it, I want them to take it all in, but at the end, I want them to realize that they're watching a very human range of emotions, that this is all stuff that other people go through. So that way, when they see it, they can have a better understanding, and perhaps the concept isn't so foreign if they see it in, in their own lives. The film will be uploaded to the Big Beef YouTube channel later that afternoon. Grief. A broadcast a on MSU TV 11 is planned for Tonight, Tuesday evening at a yet undetermined time. That's what I'm saying. Dustin Wilcox for the College News. The College News is produced by the students in Dr. Stephanie Anderson's JMC 398 Advanced Multimedia Reporting class. While we have worked hard to bring you the campus news throughout the semester, we did have some bumps in the road. Take a look at this blooper reel. Hello and welcome to this special edition of the College News. I'm Julie, okay, <laughs> sorry, like moved and then like didn't. My bad. says you two look like you're in church. We are in church yeah. right now. God bless. We, yeah, we pray to Jesus Christ there right now. Dylan. <laughs> How, what do I do with my arms? Which one looks the best? In, out. No, okay. It's not funny. Joey, tell him to stop laughing. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> okay. Aismith's coach of the year. That will... No. Oh. No. Adding to an already... Oh. Tuesday? Oh. 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 I can keep it together. What did Sharpay do in High School Musical? Have you ever watched High School Musical? Yeah, like the... <laughs> Ma. 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 We are on the road to finals and to celebrate the... Hold on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was just... <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Monday it was announced that the commuter... <laughs> wow. How do you have time with... Wait, wait, wait. To watch all that? Between school and work. <laughs> okay, all that. Coach Steve... Whoa, what is that? How you say that P word? I don't want to say anything. Uh, prerogative. So like, cr like Chrome with a P. Yes. Chrome. All right. To celebrate. <laughs> Why is she laughing? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're fine. We were, we were getting there. We were getting there. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> As DJ Tanner and Nashville self-proclaimed 26th. Hold on. 
I blinked and I lost my spot. <laughs> okay. See, not st are you messing this up? That's what I need to do. I need to be like, well, all those bloopers on the <laughs> day. <laughs> wow, it was great watching all those bloopers, even the ones from this broadcast. Yeah, that's crazy, Mr. Barry. Felt <laughs> like I've had this on every newscast. Deja vu. <laughs> well, that's all we have for this final edition of the College News. Be sure to follow the Murray State News on social media for all the latest campus and Murray happenings over the summer. Good luck on finals, racers. And have a great summer. From all of us at JMC 398, thanks for watching.